Because of the dead families, this. Yeah. No, no, I'm retired. I'm trying to get as many games, especially the weekdays, which is a good thing, Johnny. Um, but I do a lot bringing the son. My son's a mascot today. So it's great for me to see him out on the pitch, you know, after being playing here. Absolutely. So, um, you, you, what your career goes back to in 1998. Who signed you and uh, when, when did that happen? It was actually Cowboy. Cowboy signed me and then he got the sack the week later. <laughs> Any connection? <laughs> it seems to be quite frequently throughout my career. Um, you know, I, he gave me the chance as an S and, and then Jockey came in and gave me uh, a two year career apprentice at the back of the Peter in Germany. I need to see that because Peter said it Good stuff. So, um, at your time in Denge, you had some terrific goals in front of you, didn't you? Again, I need to see this because Peter and I are sitting there, but Rob, um, Rob is the only, he's, he's, you know, to this day now that he's been playing at 40 plus, so it's incredible. Um, and then Sproni came in and the guy, he's, he's been the Premiership. For me, he should have been playing for Argentina years ago. Um, <laughs> Can I just say, security, he's not even in here, he's in Argentina. <laughs> Um, but no, to learn from those two, and the coaches have had, you know, Billy Thompson, Paul Mayers, Rob Geddes, to name a few, you know, they've, they've put me into where I was in my career, unfortunately it was cut short through injury, but I can always look back now and pass this information on to the young boys. Good stuff. Um, we've obviously, we've run through the questions beforehand, but we've had one added in. Um, thanks to your dad. <laughs> 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 he says um, you have to be daft to be a goalie. You want to tell us about the night that you dropped Jamie Langfield off and got stopped by the police? <laughs> like I said, prick. <laughs> okay, I was, um, me and Jamie had been out in the car and shh. Peter apologies, but Peter paid me £65 a week as an apprentice and all I could afford was a £400 Nova Sea Reg. I had one wing mirror, bullet holes on the side which were with rust, two flat tyres and to open the car you actually had to physically pull out the lock to turn it. To get the window down you had to push it with your fingers. So I was going down to Hill Town which is a well known area. Um, no, it's very well known and it's very well known. It's a nice, nice area. So I got there and bought the health town and I just see these blue flashing lights in the back of the car. So I pulled into the side and the guy he says, is this your car? And I says, yes, unfortunately. He says, where do you work? I says, Dundee Football Club. And he says, is that? And you're driving a car like that? I says, speak to Peter Mark because the miserable sort gave me 65 pound a week. <laughs> He says, um, <laughs> I've reason to believe this car's stolen. And I says, oh, so did I. <laughs> and I says, could you jump in the back of the car, please? And I says, well, do you want the radio off? And he looked and he says, well, if you want, that's no problem, us. So as I jumped out of the car and I flicked, off, I flicked my driver's car seat forward, and he stood and he went, you dare sit And I says, yeah, it's okay, we know who you are. So they jumped in the car and took off, but it was only after I was sitting in the car and I thought, shh, I was about to jump in the back of my own car, wasn't I? Not a <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. So, Nanzazi, Kinija, Ravanelli, anybody else give you flavour in your time? Mm, yeah, there's been a few crackers. Um, there's been a few ditties as well. <laughs> uh, but no, the three you've mentioned there are incredible players, incredible role models. Um, and I never forget Ravenelli. He came in and we went through the administration period. We sat in the room through there, Jim Duffy read out the names of who was, you know, who was getting kept, who was getting let go, and Ravenelli was let go, unfortunately. And he stood up and he says, Look, it's not no problem with myself, he says, money's not an issue on. He says, but I do feel for the job, you know, the kids that were coming through. And I thought for an international world star to think about the kids coming through Dundee, 
Yeah. Absolutely. And um, so after Dundee, you moved on to Aberdeen and Ross County. Do you have a thing for sheep? No, just get it on. You got the number one jersey at Aberdeen in unusual circumstances. You must have seen. Yeah, well, when I came through Dundee, me and Jamie were very uh, really good pals. When he got his move to Aberdeen, he, he, he changed in a different person. He thought he was unstoppable. I don't know why. He, um, he thought he was invincible. And unfortunately for him, unfortunately for me, and Michael Lewis on his saga, he pushed himself to us in the seat. <laughs> so, I opened up the door for me there. Um, but to this day as well, I still think there's something going on between him and Paul Lewis. Because for somebody I'll never play for Aberdeen again, to get 10 years out of that. Uh, I think karma's um, round the corner somewhere. So you were then back to Dens and then off to Cyprus and Fort Martin United. You've seen some parts of the world, haven't you? Well, I went to Cyprus. That was a great experience apart from getting paid. Uh, not getting paid, sorry. Um, the only thing that kept me going was Dulux. They sponsored me for the Sun Cream. Uh, <laughs> but that was a great experience. Oh my, the many things in the world. And, you know, I'm a great believer that I've gone there, didn't get a penny, um, and things happen for a reason in life. You know, and when I went there and I came back and I went, I went down the league and I went part time because I didn't have the love for it, which is unfortunate. But it then allowed me to open up one academy. Absolutely, well we'll come to that a bit later on. So you got a Scotland B cap, who were your teammates, who, many, who did you play? Um, How's the score? I got a Scotland B cap against Germany, I got home 4 0, which is Fantastic. <laughs> but at that time, I was playing with guys like McFadden, Darren Fletcher, and uh, Sean Maloney. A lot of the guys that are kind of made the first team, you know. And it was a great experience to play with these guys. Um, I don't know, it was, it was better Vox was a manager, so I think he was getting a cap at that time. So it was just, <laughs> <laughs> it was just a <laughs> <laughs> Super. And then obviously you, you've, um, you were doing a bit of work across the road with uh, the, 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 the goalkeepers. And then... Uh, no, unfortunately what happened is I got caught pissed with the street. <laughs> <laughs> and we were sent down there for community service. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, just just we've got two more questions. First of all, um, the main one, Derek Shooter Goalkeeper Academy. You want to tell us a wee bit about that? Yeah, when I came back from Cyprus, I was at the end, and like I said, I'd um, felt a love of full time training and stuff. So what I did was I put my head together for the first time in my life, and I thought I'm going to start an academy. Contacted all the clubs locally, and now it's expanded. You know, I've got kids as far as Perth. Some in Fife, some from Lawrence Cup, so they even coming down to Dundee too. My aim is that I'm trying to develop the kid from six years old. He's, you know, he's in the younger class, which is big. He was sitting this morning, but he didn't make it. But he's sitting here, watch the tally. Um, the, the aim is to get a kid of six year old plus and to develop them in the best way possible and to give them a chance at their dream. In the last four years, I've started to kids up. Going through myself and going into various clubs professionally. So if I can give the kids, you know, a chance at their team, a first step on a ladder, then that's what uh, I'm yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Well, so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And um, if anyone knows any kids, what's the best way to contact you? Either through Facebook or if any part of the home, I'll get that done Spot. Okay, so, so you know that. So, just. <laughs> this microphone, Laura. Um, just one final thing, and um, it's today's prediction. We always ask our guests for a prediction. And today is the start of the charity. Big thank you to Ladbrokes and Arbroath Road. 
um, who have given us a ten pound charity bet for the for Club of so the Cliff Lip and Pal Association, and that of course is David Mitchell, uh, one of our goalies at Dens here. His son was born with the condition, so a very worthwhile cause. So no pressure. But uh, no, it's okay. Um, what's your prediction for today, Derek? I'm under no pressure because my niece was born with the same condition. Um, so I've been there personally, my family personally, I've been there before. Amazing what they could do now with the surgery and stuff. And, but I think I've done the 2-1 victory. Well, um, I've quickly worked out, because we didn't uh, discuss this earlier, that we're getting 7 to 1 odds for that. So if that comes in, that'll be £80 pound for the charity. And then also, if that does come in today, my dad's going to double it. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed that. I most certainly have. Will you please put your hands together, please, for Derek Suter. Thank you.